Hello, welcome back. I have to start off by saying, excuse the mess, but we had our progress interrupted by heavy rains. So hopefully this weekend the sun is shining and we'll get back at the task. Well, I was waiting, hoping that I would have lots of progress to show you, but unfortunately because of the rain. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you where we're at right now. This is what I got for Christmas, well, it's not here yet, but it's being built. Well, we got rid of the hot tub. Yep, it broke, it was high maintenance, and we just got rid of it, I think during COVID. So the pad was sitting there empty, and so my husband decided we were gonna do something with that empty cement pad that we had poured. It also, had power, see that cord off to the left? That was power set up for 220 with a little bit of tools, lumber, and some help from a professional carpenter. My husband and Christian started to build a tiki bar, tiki hut, whatever you want to call it. Ah, this is a lot of work. Just know in advance, it's a lot of work. Because my husband had purchased a truckload of clearance wood each board had to be assessed to see if it was actually true and could be used in this video i want to show you what it took to actually build the structure and then i want to show you how we decorated and what went into that because it's two separate things this metal was going to be the future look i know it doesn't look like anything now but it will be our carpenter had an assortment of tools something to think about if you're going to be doing this yourself will you have to buy or rent tools that could really add up so you can see how much progress was made the very first day and they worked well until they couldn't see anymore I was delighted that walls were put up and a flooring was laid. By the way, you would never want to build this right onto a slab structure. You always want to have a subfloor because of moisture and future potential problems. Another reason to hire someone who really knows what they're doing. Christian was up and down and all around and hammering and sawing and down on the ground and scrambling and measuring. This guy worked so hard. I know my husband was exhausted at the end of each day. Well, this guy's in his 20s and full of energy and a delight to work with because he really does know what he's doing. Another element that had to be accounted for with this little tiki hut was that it was not a perfect square. My husband's idea, let's make it fun, let's make it whimsical. That equates to nothing is even and nothing is standard. So everything has to be measured and remeasured and then sort of fit together to work. It's a little loud out here, but you can see they're back at it. I think we're going to have a roof by today and maybe interior by next weekend. Not decorated, but at least the walls and maybe electrical. So, fingers crossed, no more rain! Just watching him move like an acrobat up on that structure makes me nervous. It's the mom in me, I guess, but he really does know what he's doing. It's very light on his feet. Those tools are heavy, and he lifted them and used those tools all day long. This guy must have been exhausted at the end of the day. Thank you, Christian. And because the structure was an irregular shape, that meant that the roof was going to be quite the challenge. Add to that that my husband had the idea of making it look like a palm leaf on the inside. I did come home to find that he had completed the roof, and that includes shingles. So if you're building, remember you have to protect it from the elements. The next thing I had to do was decide where I wanted the electricity. I went crazy because I knew I wanted a lot of tiki lights. I knew I wanted to have a lot of the lighting up on the ceiling, 
And so that's why I was thinking about where would I plug everything in. When the electrician arrived, and he told me exactly what was going to happen. He was going to wire it so that all of the ceiling would come on at once with a flick of a switch when I walked in. Now, why didn't I think of that? So there you can see the box that was originally where the power for the spa came through. As it turns out, got my own little breaker box, and that will be behind the bar. It's a good idea to take some pictures of the wiring before you put up any of your drywall, just in case for the future you need to know what's what. Now I have a little hidey hole underneath the floor behind the bar. During the week when it was raining, I was able to get out there and put a few coats of satin espresso onto the boards. I'm kind of short, so I couldn't really reach the really high, high points, but I was able to get a little help. Since I'm only five feet tall, Connie's able to get the spots that I can't reach. With my long I say Connie and I are going to have the first drink in this place. Oh yeah. My husband's making some markings on the floor because once the walls are covered, he'll want to know where certain things are. Of course, we have a supervisor watching over everything. He didn't think it was going to take very much insulation. He wound up going back for three more bundles. We did not put wallboard on all of the walls. I needed to leave that upper section open for all of my mugs, but it, it does add up. Make sure you wear protective gear if you are dealing with fiberglass. That would include some sort of eye protection as well as your hands and your clothes, and then take a shower when you're finished. We decided to go with artificial thatching. It's a little more expensive, but it is good for 20 years. Real thatching has to be maintained and probably replaced within three years. We decided we didn't want to do that, not to mention the Santa Ana winds would destroy it in no time. I went with the artificial. It runs roughly $20 a panel. My husband is using a Milwaukee cordless staple gun, a great investment if you're going to be doing very much building or stapling, which huh, we use the heck out of this thing. It was a great investment. This hut is so tall, you do not see the actual roof, and so he decided to go ahead and have this thatching hang down the front. We're basically creating an illusion, and he just tucked it into the roof line. We weren't really sure what we were gonna do with the door, so I found this adhesive that made it look sort of like bamboo. It can come off easily if we come up with another plan later on. Remember that corrugated metal that my husband put all around the outside? Well, this was an idea that we talked about as far as making it look like bamboo. This took a whole weekend to do. It was quite labor intensive, but he did a really great job. I just wanted to show you the different layers of paint application, how he came up with this bamboo look. It was three or four different layers. He wound up not using that wood stain that he bought. It was a golden clear kind of varnish. He was concerned it wouldn't do well on the metal and we really didn't need it. At the end, he wound up using that spray paint and putting it into a dish so that he could dab and make those artistic bamboo lines. I purchased solar tiki torches and he made some custom holders which mounted right into that metal. So we're not finished yet. Stick around because there's more to come from the Tiki Torch.